What does Luna, Celsius, and now most recently FTX have to do with the current crypto bear market? We're going to break down exactly how these things intercede and play into the current state of the bear market. For years, we've been tracking the cycles of Bitcoin, bull market high to bear market low, back to bull market high, now into a new bear market, and all of these things happening right now within the current bear market. What we're going to look at on these charts might surprise you in terms of these events happening in the middle of a bear market. I want to start here. If we look back, this is a headline for May 8th. UST stablecoin briefly loses peg. Luna drops 10%. Drops 10%, just 10%. Do you remember this happening? This was not long ago. Almost sends shivers down your spine to see this headline May 8th. And then we go here, May 12th, four days later. Cryptocurrency Luna now almost worthless. After controversial stablecoin, it is linked to loses peg. It was not that long ago in May that this was happening. And it was not that long ago uh, we were seeing this happen on the Bitcoin charts. I have it marked here. Luna in May, just this, this move in the middle of this bear market, bringing crypto down. And then finally, crypto kind of steady sideways after, right there. And then what happened next, everybody? If you've been in crypto, you know what happened next. Crypto debacle at Celsius rattles market already sh shaken by Terra. Lender Celsius pauses withdrawals. Business model question. Do you remember Celsius? Just almost too big to fail in the crypto space, pausing withdrawals, being questioned right after this Luna situation happened. And then what? how did this proceed? What happened next? Crypto lender Celsius files for bankruptcy. Here's a title, July 14th, 2022. Celsius falling. Now, this and these two events, Luna and Celsius, were not the first scandals, these first huge negative events to happen in crypto. And certainly, they were not going to be the last, but here we are in this bear market and we're tracking a new one. Divisions in SBF's crypto empire blur on his trading titan Alameda's balance sheet. FTX CEO SBF denies insolvency rumors as Binance liquidates FTT token. The headlines are almost echoing perfectly the Luna and Celsius headlines before the ultimate crash happened. And here we are, November 14, 2022, bankrupt crypto exchange FTX is under criminal investigation in the Bahamas. How in the world, as a space, did we get here? I want to say, before we proceed to look at the, these events and look at how it plays into the charts and into the bear market, telling you this data might shock you, I want to say that this reset and everything that's happening with these events, ultimately, I think, going to be good for crypto. Crypto needs to grow up. Crypto needs to mature. We need some guidance. And I think these events are going to trigger that guidance. So here's a headline. Uh, this is from The Atlantic. And from a mental perspective, everybody, brace for impact. Brace for this. You can never forget or you can forget about crypto now. So you're going to see the headlines. Crypto is done. And we've been here before, and especially in bear markets. And if, if crypto continues to fall, it's going to get worse. Crypto is done is what, is what you'll see. And you'll see these, these well-written, and I'm telling you, they are so romanticized, these articles, when they come out. And it's almost every year we get these, we get these articles. They're romanticized. Despite the constant feeling that everything might fall apart at any moment, there will come a time when crypto really arrives. The fall of SBF and the more than likely fall of many more firms in the immediate future has sapped much of that hope. Now it's hard to imagine a near or even a mid-medium term future where crypto has a fraction of the influence it did six months ago. This fast-growing space of crypto and the good people building within it are not going to be stopped. This is just getting this is just getting started. This, this story is just beginning. And while this, these events like FTX falling slows things down in the short term, ultimately, it is what will make crypto stronger. It is what will define the direction of crypto. That's what's happening before our eyes. And it is kind of painful. The growing pains of such a new early stage space that lack guidance and regulations, that lack that guidance, it's growing pains. We're going to get through it. I really think we are. So here we are. FTX's bust and crypto crash come with two silver linings. Now, this is a great article, and I want to point out two of these things to you. First, the crypto crash has not spread over to the stock market. 
you might be like, well, obviously, crypto is so small. The S&P 500 is up 5.9% in the past five day, five trading sessions compared with 19% drop for Bitcoin. You go to the Bitcoin chart, there's the drop. You go to a daily chart, you can see, actually, this isn't a daily, this is a weekly, but you can see Bitcoin falling below a macro, macro 786 line, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Now, we think Bitcoin and ETH remain a too small part of the market to cause broader financial market contagion with a total crypto market cap size of $890 billion versus $41 trillion for U.S. equities. Can someone say, we're early? We're early. Citigroup digital asset analyst Joseph Ayub said in a note to clients, the FTX shortfall is still relatively small in comparison to other crypto events, such as Luna, $40 billion loss or market cap losses in public tech names. So that's just the point, everybody. Right now, because we're in the heat of the moment and it's bad, don't get me wrong, it's bad. Everybody's kind of saying like, man, this is, this is too big of a blow. Not everybody, but a lot of people are saying that. Too big of a blow. But mark my words, we're going to get through this and it's going to be kind of just a blip on the radar as the crypto space progresses, matures, and grows into what I think will be a multi-trillion dollar, I think tens of trillions of dollars coming into crypto in the years to come. This will be a blip on the radar. What has happened, this is point number two, with FTX should ultimately set the groundwork for a more stable crypto market over time. If you want the tens of trillions of dollars to come into crypto, we need that. We need things like this to happen. That FTX, this FTX situation, it has to happen. The, the, the bad players with terrible intent need to be flushed out. And with that happening, the space needs to mature. There are a couple of reasons for that, such as regulators coming in next year with new guardrails and the washout removing from uh, maybe fewer crypto events in the Bahamas with Lambos parked outside for the gram and bad actors. We're looking at USBF. What we have witnessed in the past week is a flush out and it's all good. Even if there's pain to be had today, I'm telling you, we need to go through that short-term pain and we are. We go back to this chart now. Let's look at this. So here are the three events that I wanted to point out. This is a weekly chart. This is unbelievable data because we have Luna in May, crypto falling. We have Celsius in June, crypto falling. Now we have FTX here in November, crypto falling. Each of these situations has triggered crypto to fall deeper into the bear market and hit just these macro indicators. And, and really line up in the technical analysis world what we've been anticipating throughout this bear market. Meaning the news and the headlines and all of the, these negative events have triggered crypto to make the technical analysis fundamental move. And this is something that I always talk about. This is, this is a lot of people say technical analysis doesn't work because all of these outside events, these black swan events, they can happen. And it's true. But ultimately, as we use technical analysis as a roadmap, the events are triggering crypto to fall into ranges and to give us confirmations that are there waiting for us on the roadmap, right? Because if these events didn't happen, maybe we wouldn't be into this technical range just yet. And that technical range, everybody, I'm telling you, as somebody who does technical analysis, and this is how I see things from a cycle perspective, this range, so important. Now, what is that range? Many of you have been watching my channel. You know the range. It's the last bear market low to bull market high up here, back down to a 786 line. That is an area where Bitcoin fell below, and it fell below uh, in the 2018 bear market, and it fell below in the 2015 bear market. We've, we've got the events that triggered us to get here, and now we're here. And now, as crypto does reset, and crypto makes a name for itself and redefines itself, because that's what we're going through. We're going through this, this new stage of growth where crypto is redefining itself. And as that's happening, we're, we're entering this bottom range. And to keep this in mind, as these events have triggered crypto to fall into this bottom range, here's Bitcoin, the roadmap, I say, for crypto. This last bottom range below the 786, that yellow line was 133 days. Crypto traded there for 133 days. Before that, in 2015, below the 786 line, 301 days. Here we are. All of these events have happened. Crypto, Bitcoin just fell below the 786 line. We haven't even really begun to bottom out in this range just yet. 
we know in the last cycle is 133 days. Let's say it's going to be that long again. We did this in a previous video. If we take our date range from when crypto Bitcoin fell into this range, 133 days or so, that leads us into March of 2023. My point here is this, the technical analysis, the cycles of Bitcoin, and that 786 line is a line that I've discussed since the last bear market in 2018. That line, all the technical analysis involved here, just lining up so brilliantly, so nicely with all of these events, which have triggered Bitcoin and crypto to fall in the, in the range, in the bottom range. And now here we are as crypto holders, and we're, we're having to endure the pain of the bear market. And we're also having to endure the pain of the headlines, which are calling for crypto to be over the end of crypto. Crypto kind of losing its, losing its steam, as many might say. We have to endure that as we go through this reset phase, not only from a technical analysis perspective, as you see here on the charts, but also just from a, a, a redefinition perspective. Remember, crypto is re redefining itself now. And, and a lot is going to have to go into that. And it's really up to everybody involved in crypto in their own little segment of crypto, whether that is content creators and, or business builders or whoever it is, the, the exchanges, getting everything together and being transparent and working for, for the good of the people that are in this space, all of these things need to come together to redefine crypto, to set a better, stronger, more firm and honest foundation. And that's what's happening right now. And what's so powerful about this, I'm, t I'm, I'm truly convinced of this, is it's happening in this bottom range. And this is all coming together. This is all in the last week we've fallen below the 786 line. If you've been watching my videos, everybody, you know I've been talking about this 786 line for so long. And the fact that we've hit that area is, is a huge play for me, just from purely fundamentals as it, as it pertains to technical analysis. The fact that crypto right now is doing this in an environment where all of these huge players are falling and crypto is redefining itself I think it is huge. I think it sets the foundation truly for the next cycle and truly for the tens of trillions of dollars to enter crypto that we talk about so often. So these are my thoughts today, everybody. Let me know your thoughts below in the comments. I appreciate you. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. God bless.